Welcome, this is NKBA and you are here for Elevate Your Business with Outdoor Kitchen and Entertainment Solutions with Mitch Slater, who's the president of Danvers Stainless Outdoor Kitchens. And Mitch, if you are there, we're ready to get started. Thanks so much. Uh, I am here. Thank you very much for having me come in and I look forward to hopefully giving you some really good information. To introduce myself, uh, I bought a sheet metal factory in 1998. Uh, which is quite a while ago, and we began making cabinets for indoor kitchens in 1999, and then for outdoor kitchens in uh, 2000. So it's been quite a while since we introduced the cabinet line, which has given us a long time to uh, develop uh, the market, first of all, because the outdoor kitchen market at that time was pretty much just barbecue islands. And what we did is we pushed more of an indoor-outdoor uh, living room concept, uh, for uh, uh, the market so that they could really utilize cabinetry that looked like an indoor product for outdoor use. Um, we've constantly been adding new features to address different styles uh, as the market has changed and adapted to uh, all sorts of climates and uh, locations uh, beyond just a backyard area where maybe there was a pool or something before uh, to areas where uh, it's just it looks like another room from the house. And uh, what I want to do is, is uh, let you guys in on what we're seeing out there. So hopefully you can uh, develop uh, an additional market segment or make a maybe a more profitable segment than what it is right now for you. And, uh, and hopefully I can do that. So that's enough about me. So I'm going to talk about uh, what we've got uh, as, a, as far as a market goes right now. First thing I'd like to talk about is the... Uh, now I'm having trouble moving the slide. <laughs> there we go. Not sure what the deal was there. Um, the indoor outdoor living is is one of the ones uh, one of the things I really wanted to talk about. How uh, originally it was talked about as just a a, a kitchen, um, but the kitchen was focused uh, solely on the uh, appliances, really more the grill or the uh, side burner or something like that. Um, where uh, our push and the push that we've seen uh, take effect right now, really take hold, is the outdoor living room, where it's more of an entertainment room, which lends itself to cabinetry for uh, storage and for beauty, very similar to the way the uh, heart of the home uh, became the kitchen. Uh, we're seeing that the heart of the home outdoors is similar. Uh, some people still call it a kitchen, but we like to call it an outdoor living room. Um, the uh, magazine community out there has bought into this concept and has been talking about it, which is another thing that really helped us uh, uh, push this concept forward uh, beyond just being the kitchen. So you're seeing it in casual living, you're seeing it in um, the kitchen and bath design uh, community. Uh, here's another one, and you see again uh, how it's grown to be the number one segment that people are are seeing as uh, an opportunity to develop into a, a profitable segment because people are trying to do this. Um, here's Zillow saying that uh, for 25% of the homes that they, they saw, uh, there was uh, increased value for uh, the outdoor kitchen, as they called it at the time. This is uh, still only a year ago, April 18th. Um, but here you can see the pizza ovens was very important, as does the prep sink, but all that is part of the outdoor kitchen. Um, the only thing probably here that's not are professional appliances in general in the outdoor fireplace, which is adjacent to the, to the outdoor living room. And you can see as the years go on that uh, it continues to hold a really strong position. So I, I just wanted to demonstrate that. What we're seeing around the, uh, uh, the country, you know, most people or many people who aren't in the market really look at this as something you see in warm weather climates uh, mostly. And I guess you could argue that that's true, uh, that uh, warm weather climates are, uh, offer the best opportunity. Uh, but what we're seeing is the coasts and even inland uh, is really starting to generate uh, a lot of interest for some sort of an outdoor entertainment space. It may be that some of the northern ones are smaller, uh, but that's not always true. It depends on the size of the property and the uh, home value uh, and what people do outdoors in the good weather, uh, because that's what we found it to uh, really be important was that 
people were outfitting their home for when the weather's good, regardless of whether they're in uh, uh, the South or the upper Midwest. Uh, we're seeing that as a, a really big, big driver of, uh, of, of this market. Uh, for people who are all about cooking, there's tons and tons of uh, products for that where uh, there's uh, different side burners, different uh, charcoal grills, and, um, as well as all gas grills, infrared, electric grills. It's really a big segment uh, for the people who like to cook. Um, our segment is more about the cabinetry that's, that holds those appliances, or they want to just uh, have it for an entertainment space without the cooking, if it's uh, truly just an indoor, outdoor room. Uh, where they don't want to uh, cook. They'll make, they may cook outdoors completely, but the indoor-outdoor room has cabinets. Different construction types that we see uh, is the uh, masonry, stucco, brick thing that's been around for, uh, since the beginning of this market in the, in the 90s. Uh, a lot of those are built in place. It's still a big segment. A lot of the landscapers do this and the pool builders do these. Uh, there's a huge contingent of uh, grill retailers, uh, you know, in the hearth patio barbecue market uh, that do those. That seems to be their preferred thing uh, uh, to deliver the grills to the backyards of the customers. Uh, some of those have nothing at all, and it's just a grill on a cart, which is still very popular. Um, but from the cabinetry standpoint, uh, I mean, we, we may have been early on first, but there's uh, a large contingent of people coming out now with metal like us, uh, as well as uh, the uh, resins like a PVC foam or uh, a high-density polyethylene like a starboard product. And there's uh, a lot of different finishes being put out there. So this cabinetry section segment is really the one that I see as the uh, great opportunity for growth because a lot of people now who are getting involved with putting this in their backyards uh, didn't have that option before and maybe didn't really move on it beyond the grill on a cart until they see these uh, cabinetry options. The beauty of the media picking it up and promoting it uh, is really helped in getting it established as uh, the uh, lead alternative for the indoor outdoor room uh, beyond the stucco or stone type things because if the room looks like it's indoors, even though it's mostly outdoors, uh, stone doesn't necessarily fit the bill for the, the style or the look. Uh, so that's, that's where we've seen that come from. Here's what we still see, which is why the opportunity is so great, is that the uh, grilling island, whether it's stucco, stone, or whatever, uh, but non-cabinet, that's still the, the largest uh, install that we see in the field nationwide. Um, I mean, we sell in Canada too, and it's in Canada as well. Uh, there's this thing where people are allowing their uh, their landscaper or pool builder to say, "Hey, how, I can put this in for you if you really want." And, uh, uh, and a lot of the people haven't maybe read the the, uh, the magazines that are promoting this new trend uh, toward cabinets. So you'll still see these things being put in. The landscape architect segment puts a lot of these things in as well because uh, they may not have had formal training really on, on an outdoor living room or outdoor kitchen. Uh, their um, education really focused more on, on the backyard and moving the, uh, putting plants and, and doing some other beautiful uh, garden work, uh, but not necessarily within the kitchen world. So the cabinetry is on the move. That's what we see as the greatest opportunity for uh, people in the, uh, the kitchen world and others who are focused on cabinetry. Here's uh, just some ideas of where uh, the people may not be thinking about uh, every place to put it, uh, but that you as uh, uh, kitchen designers can recommend to uh, clients. Uh, we see them in uh, garages and boat docks, pool houses and cabanas are, are huge in uh, second homes where people have uh, um, a, uh, a large pool or a large uh, backyard area where maybe they're a city dweller. Um, again, the city dwellers do have an opportunity as well for decks uh, and patios uh, and um, um, what they call verandas. Um, but there's lots of other opportunities that you could put these on. And we see a lot in the Northeast that the tennis courts, for instance, they put a bar or uh, a refrigeration set up. Uh, same with, um, I didn't put it on here, but, oh no, I did. There it is, horse barns. We see a lot of those in areas where people have a lot of property 
um, and that's uh, all over the country. There's just different areas where these types of uh, properties exist. Here's where, again, to focus more on your opportunity is to uh, uh, make the homeowner aware of the, uh, the fact that you can do these types of projects. Uh, there are many cases they're hiring you to do interiors, then you just, all, uh, just have to ask them what they're doing for outdoors because uh, a lot of them will, by default, go to their, their uh, landscaper or uh, pool builder if they're building a pool. And uh, you could be missing out on an opportunity. Uh, most of the plans for renovations these days have some sort of an outdoor uh, living uh, space on there, and you usually get the plans to do the kitchen or bath. Uh, so those, those opportunities are on the property, on the plans, and you can uh, really go right after that uh, because uh, somebody's going to do it. As you can see, here's some examples of, uh, in this case, it's one of those uh, uh, walls that opens up, the glass walls, like a nano wall or some of their competitors. And it's going into a room that uh, is open completely on one side, uh, but they wanted to have it look like the kitchen from the inside. Uh, so you can see how it can ex expand right out into uh, this indoor-outdoor living room. We're seeing this all over the country. And you can see um, the picture on the right depict the, uh, the cabinetry that looks uh, just like uh, um, a, door, uh, a door style and cabinet for an indoor kitchen. And that's, that's kind of the direction we're seeing this market go. Here's another one. In this case, they used a French door, uh, but the same idea. This is a different part of the country. I believe the other one was in the East Coast. This one's in the West Coast. Um, we're seeing it uh, up and down the coast and uh, inland as well. Um, this is a main house, so it's probably not a, um, a house for uh, the people who have a... Um, second or third home, this is probably the main home. Obviously, they could have multiple homes, but it's, it's not like it's a vacation home. This is really one that's uh, uh, in, uh, near the heart of town in Southern California. Here's some other examples of uh, uh, the Northeast. And, and, and here, uh, we had people who, uh, the person on the right happened to be a furniture dealer. The person on the left happened to be a kitchen dealer. Uh, they put these in. The one on the right is in Massachusetts. The one on the left is in the Hamptons in Long Island. Um, and, you know, it, it, you see some of them with coverings these days, and shockingly, the one in the Hamptons is uh, wide open. This particular property has uh, uh, behind, uh, behind it, or I guess in front of it from our po point of view here, uh, they have a, a cover over the chairs, but they, they put it out there for people to just uh, have the cooking and the, the bar out front. Uh, the pool is off to the left and the, and the furniture uh, kind of where we're standing in this picture. Um, so what I, I like to do is show a lot of photos so you can get some idea of the scope of the, the projects uh, that are available and uh, also uh, the locations so you can see uh, how people are addressing these different areas outdoors. One of the things that uh, uh, I like to talk about is a lot of times uh, the, the homeowners are, you know, trying to figure out a budget. It's, it's not typical that when they, they look at uh, a large-scope project that they're thinking about the actual size of the budget. Uh, if they're looking for just grilling or just a grill, refrigerator, and a side burner, it's easy to come up with a budget because all they got to do is go to any of the retailers or to... Uh, online and they can, uh, you know, check out pretty much any appliance. It's when it comes to the cabinetry and the scope of the entertaining that they kind of probably need help with respect to the design uh, and what uh, what maybe to do. And then in many cases, they, they'll see a budget that's, or the number that comes out as, a, as a, uh, an idea of what the budget would be is way beyond uh, what they had anticipated on spending. Um, but in many cases, the outdoor living space becomes part of a backyard or whole house remodel. Uh, and in those cases, uh, they may be more uh, open to uh, not being shocked by what the budget would be for, for cabinetry um, because the cabinetry is just a small part of a, a large-scale remodel. Um, and it's, uh, it, it is one of these 
popular things that's being put into uh, these remodels uh, frequently. In many cases, you'll see the new home builder or custom builder also putting these spaces in. And uh, again, it's part of the whole project, so it becomes less in their mind than if they were just coming in to look for a grill station. Uh, but what we've found is that if you open their eyes to how this space can be used, then you'll find that they'll be a lot more open to uh, revisiting what the budget was, uh, um, given that they're thinking about it in a different way. And that's, in many cases, uh, what your job is. Uh, you know you do it with uh, kitchens and baths, um, and you can do the same thing uh, with the outdoor uh, living space, which is what uh, we find has been very successful for uh, our dealers. This is a large space in, uh, in Calgary, uh, which you might say, why would anyone put something like this in Calgary? It's because they're setting it up for when the weather's good. Now, in this particular case, uh, they put a lot of heaters in this space also, because Calgary is 90 degrees in the summer and minus 40 in, uh, in the winter. Uh, so, you know, it's probably still, even with heaters, unlikely that people are going to uh, hang out when it's minus 40. <laughs> But uh, uh, they could easily hang out when it's, uh, uh, you know, in the uh, zero to 30 range um, because those heaters will do a pretty good job of keeping people warm in that large space. Those are uh, infrared heaters that actually warm objects as opposed to the air. So it's a fairly efficient way to keep uh, the people warm. Um, you'll see those types of heaters in uh, train stations in Chicago and things like that. And you know if, if you're there in the winter, how it can actually keep you warm for a good period of time uh, while you're in the space. Uh, so there's an ancillary uh, um, uh, set of business you can do beyond just the cabinets. Obviously, we're just cabinet builders, but there's uh, a load of opportunity in uh, furniture, the heaters, uh, roofing materials, uh, pergolas, uh, things like that, that will give you the ability to uh, sell a lot more product for that same space than just cabinetry. And any of you doing you know, full-scale remodels know that there's a large opportunity to really get people excited about uh, other products that they may not have thought about. You can see here, we're, one of the trends we're seeing is uh, this wraparound countertop, uh, which they call here in this case a waterfall edge. Um, we're seeing a lot of that. Uh, there, we're seeing a lot of appliances. Uh, this person obviously does a lot of entertainment. Um, because they have a pretty large grill there, pizza oven, uh, an egg, a couple of refrigerators. Uh, so they got a lot of stuff going on and, and uh, a big space that they can hold uh, parties and things. The people we see uh, um, moving these trends forward and kind of uh, giving us inspiration to develop new and different looking versions of our cabinetry um, is uh, really the design community, architects, landscape architects, uh, people like, your, like yourself who are uh, doing it indoors and want to have something similar outdoors for people to uh, have that uh, stylish uh, space that uh, fits what types of things they like, whether it's traditional uh, or contemporary. Um, we tend to be moving right now in a more contemporary way because we're getting a lot of uh, urban people uh, doing these types of things, whether it's on rooftops uh, or on balconies. Uh, they, they may be smaller in scope, but they're high in, in style so that we are putting a lot of energy into developing these different looks. Here's a look that looks like the, the stone, uh, and that, that uh, finish is actually on, the, in our case, the stainless steel doors. Uh, so it matches the uh, countertop and the floor in this particular situation. Um, so we're, we're constantly pushing the envelope on, on finishes uh, as that really is a, is a big segment for us uh, that people are looking to come up with new and different things. Here's, here we're seeing a typical backyard on the left, but the, the one on the right is a, a rooftop in uh, New Orleans. Um, just exposed to the sky, uh, this uh, homeowner uh, does a lot of entertaining, um, doesn't really cook as a matter of fact. They, they bring in uh, catered uh, meals so that uh, 
Um, they have a bartender usually. They sometimes bring a, uh, a band there so that uh, people can uh, enjoy the music and it's really just a party, a party space for them as opposed to them being any kind of a gourmet cook or, or uh, uh, chef. They, li they like to have uh, everything around and they can mingle with, the, with their uh, party goers. Uh, the one on the left is that's uh, one of three segments. They have a uh, this is the bar area. They have a cooking area. They have a prep area. Uh, they tend to cook, um, but they also uh, do their their own bar. Uh, so they have a large space. It's more spread out. The one on the left is California, um, and they have a pool area and stuff. So what it is is you're you're seeing. Uh, I don't know. I guess I chose a lot of large ones here, but. Uh, a lot of them, depending on the location in the country, uh, can be very small. Uh, I'm down here in Florida right now, and in Florida, there's, uh, uh, especially along the water, there's a lot of smaller properties, uh, and they do a lot of kitchens just outside the kitchen indoors, uh, where they, they'll put typically a refrigerator, a grill, uh, may or may not be a side burner, a few cabinets, and that's good enough. Uh, you'll, you'll see uh, large properties in the Northeast, uh, the kitchens probably uh, are five to or more uh, times the size of the ones that I see down in South Florida. But you go to North Florida or the Panhandle, more property, and you see uh, uh, projects uh, similar in nature to uh, a lot of the Northeastern product, projects. I might have jumped too. Here, the, you'll see them on decks. That's a Virginia installation there and uh, another uh, California installation. Here's one where uh, they didn't do the nano wall type of situation. They actually set it up uh, in, you can see, pretty close to a zero lot line uh, to the uh, neighbor adjacent. And that's, that's pretty typical in, in a lot of the Southern California properties we do uh, where they're relatively small. The, the decks lend themselves very well to cabinetry, regardless of the manufacturer, because of the, the weight. Um, we used to see people building stone things uh, on the side of a deck uh, in order to be able to support the weight. It had to be on the ground. Uh, or they had to pour special footings for the, the deck to be able to handle uh, that large of a, uh, a weight where cabinetry is uh, relatively light and is able to spread the, the heaviest things across a, a larger footprint, uh, like the egg there or the grill or the probably the most weight uh, is in the countertop. Uh, but with all the legs on the cabinets, it's spread out a lot and doesn't even affect the uh, limitation on, on the deck. This here is uh, uh, a bow deck, so it's, it's like a Trex material, uh, man-made material. Uh, not uh, actual wood, but we find ourselves on, on all sorts of, uh, of materials for decks. Here's uh, uh, s another idea of how people are putting large uh, projects in the backyard. This is a Minnesota one on the left. Uh, again, where you would say, well, they don't really have very much of the summer, um, but they want to make the most of when they have the summer. So they have a big property. Uh, and utilize it for partying. The kitchen portion is up against the house because they tend to use that uh, even during the winter, so they have quick and easy access to it. Um, and then they have seating out here. That's more for, for when the weather's nice in the spring and fall and, and summer. The, the property on the right is showing ways that you can, uh, if you talk to your customer about uh, how they can use their, their property, um, in a nice way that they may not have thought of. Here, th this area is, uh, uh, is in Sacramento, this house, and it's overlooking the, the American River uh, below. So there's nobody really that can see this space because there's no houses down below, and you can't see this space from the house. So it's a nice sunbathing area, and the architect uh, thought it would be a good area to set up some additional cabinetry uh, where they put a, 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 some water and they hold towels and things there. Uh, but it's away from the house, and the house itself has a really large bar and a really large cooking area near the pool. But it's just one more way that you can develop uh, uh, an additional uh, area and make some money from that. Um, it's, uh, it, it really is uh, something that you, if you think about the property, and you think about it in how they can enjoy the property, maybe in more ways than they're going to ask you about, it's another area for you to develop additional sales. 
There's a lot of uh, storage. Uh, here's the guy. Uh, this is on Long Island. Uh, the person, I mean, the section on the left is all about the drinking and the storage for, they have locking refrigerators there. They have a two-drawer refrigerator. They have an ice machine. So they have a lot of things for the uh, preparation of the drinks, and the other side is more of the cooking and food preparation. Uh, and they, they just have it against the house, again, because they like to use this in the, in the winter as well, or at least in the, uh, the colder weather, early spring and uh, late fall, in addition to the summer. Um, and we're seeing just more and more of this in uh, properties in the Northeast. They're really uh, about having a good time outdoors, and a lot of the times the, they want these finishes. Uh, you'll notice that most of these finishes, while they're stainless steel cabinets, don't look like, uh, like stainless steel just because the people are looking for uh, some ways to keep the, uh, uh, the product cleaner than, than having to constantly clean stainless steel to make it look good. Uh, here's another look at that uh, um, Massachusetts kitchen. Um, you, you see all the appliances they got just in this little section here. It's be, because there's so many uh, different manufacturers coming to market with different products uh, that as cabinet builders, we just treat this uh, like it's an indoor kitchen because you just put in whatever uh, appliance the customer is looking for. Um, and we make cabinets to handle all that, as do uh, most of the other cabinet manufacturers. Uh, this particular one on the right, they wanted a rolling section for that. That's called an Evo. It's a flat top griddle. That's the top on it. You pull it off, and it's a cast iron top. And uh, people like to cook around that. It's, so they want to be able to have an option for moving that away from the, uh, uh, the, the regular section of the kitchen. Um, but when people have the room, and the money, they're, they're loving these specialty uh, appliances that they can put out there uh, rather than just looking at every whatever appliance they're getting as being a general cooking product that will do some stuff OK and other stuff great. Here you can, you can actually buy uh, lots of different types of products to do specialty cooking, like pizza ovens and, uh, and this flat top griddle. And you're seeing some of these large projects. So the one on the left is, uh, I hate to keep showing these Long Island ones, but they spend a lot of money out there. Uh, and there you go with an, another uh, large project uh, with lots of appliances, because uh, people do like to cook. That's a warming drawer on the right, which is very popular. Uh, so it gives the, uh, the homeowner the ability to uh, cook and store the, uh, uh, the food. Uh, and keep it warm, or just keep the dishes warm, as, as a lot of people do. On the right, you're seeing some of this, uh, this new um, style of the more like a European uh, look, where they have uh, nested drawers uh, behind the, uh, the full height look, so that it gives a lot of that functionality that you, you would expect in the cabinets, but it's a different look, a more simple uh, uh, look that people are trying to do in the more contemporary kitchens these days. So we're seeing a lot of that. Um, here I'm focusing on the maintenance-free finishes again. Uh, what a lot of people are, are really looking for, too, is, is, is that ability to reduce the cleaning time. Um, and it's one of the most asked for things because uh, nobody wants to go out and constantly be cleaning. Now, you can't say that the, uh, the uh, dust or something from rain spatter uh, that's going to get on there it doesn't need cleaning periodically, but it's it's way easier to keep clean. And depending on the color uh, or the finish you choose, say matte versus uh, glossy uh, versus a, a texture uh, or a hammer tone, uh, some of it shows more dirt than others. Obviously, obviously this yellow one is going to show uh, more dirt than the one on the right. But the one on the right is covered over more. The other one is more just an outdoor. Uh, an outdoor space. Um, but you'll see people are putting wall cabinets up and they're creating these nice little spaces in their indoor outdoor areas that uh, are very similar to an indoor look. Here's uh, um, the wood finishes we're seeing. You're seeing that whether it's the uh, resin material, you're seeing a lot of wood look and you're seeing it with the uh, stainless steel uh, cabinets as well. Um, because there's some really innovative uh, uh, systems out there um, that can make the stainless steel pretty much look like anything. Um, and that gives you the durability, but also the uh, ease of keeping clean. 
and the cool looks that uh, can match what the homeowner is trying to accomplish uh, given the, the rest of their space that they're creating. So you as the, uh, the designer, when you're laying out your uh, customer's potential project, you have a lot of options uh, to choose from uh, with the outdoor space just like you would with the indoor space. And that goes for the handles or uh, handle less uh, uh, door styles that are available also so that you really got a, a, a great palette to work from uh, with regard to color and look uh, for all these different spaces. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there's lots of products, uh, pergolas, uh, lighting. Lighting is a big thing uh, that there's actually a certified professional, uh, lighting professional uh, uh, capabilities out there. There's people who focus on that. A lot of those people tend to be landscape people. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, it's something that, uh, depending on where you are in the country, it can really add beauty to the outdoor living space uh, beyond just this, the kitchen area. You can see this is a pretty big space here. So you could light the trees and uh, light the, uh, the entertainment area as well as the pool area and the, uh, the chairs over on the, on the left over there. Uh, um, you could also see a mix of materials. Here's a, some stone where people put cabinetry inside of the, of the stone look because this particular property is uh, uh, away from the house so that you're, you're not, the stone doesn't look out of place. It actually looks pretty nice. Um, so there's uh, the heating as I described. Uh, I'm sure many of you are aware of the fire features that is, uh, that's a huge market right now um, for uh, fire tables and uh, uh, fire features. Uh, but a lot of those are being combined with water features, and uh, many of those are, uh, are great accent pieces for uh, these properties that are putting in these entertainment spaces, which can span an area like, the, like they have here for the cooking, all the way over to the pool and uh, the seating area. Um, insect control is one of the things that certain parts of the country are, uh, require in one way or another. In many cases, uh, Florida here, we... Uh, we'll put the pool cage or the uh, uh, lanai area um, so that it helps keep the, uh, the insects out uh, of uh, the space. Some areas, if you're on the, on the water where you get enough breeze, there's, you, don't, you don't see those cages uh, because the insects just don't congregate there. Um, but uh, that's, that's one of the things that you could learn about. There's some great systems that come out of uh, Texas that they sell all over the country, or you can work with... Uh, uh, someone who uh, installs those things to help your homeowner enjoy the space uh, during the evening. Uh, I used to live in Connecticut, and in the evening in the summer is uh, um, brutal with, uh, with the mosquitoes and the bugs. You, it's so bad that you, you just can't stand it. You just go in. Uh, things like citronella don't really solve the prob problem, but there are insect control systems with sprays that are, are non-toxic. Uh, that uh, really do hold down the insects. Sinks and faucets and barbecue hoods, depending on, again, where the, the grill is located uh, and the sink and faucet, sometimes it's harder to get water to a place that's away from uh, the house. There are, there are ways to put uh, uh, drainage, and again, code will dictate uh, what's allowed for gray water. If you were to drain the sink into the ground or you have to have a dry well or you actually have to have an underground tank. Uh, that depends on local, local code, um, but we're see, you, you see, we see the whole range of it uh, across the country, and that's you got to know that in your area so that you can uh, follow whatever the requirements are for that uh, that area. Other areas we're seeing some some great opportunities are these uh, multifamily home home builders. Uh, there are. Uh, a couple of types of uh, projects that we see going in. There's the uh, rental projects like apartment buildings. That's where the developer controls what goes in. Uh, so typically those are more uh, common area type uh, projects uh, as opposed to the one on the right, the individual balconies, uh, which are typically townhouses and uh, condos where the, the property actually is sold to the, the person living there. So in those cases, uh, code will dictate what type of, say, cooking products, whether you have to have an electric grill or you're allowed an open flame, um, and what type of, uh, whether you can have water or no water. Um, and 
those those things are, are driven by code, but in general, generally, those people can then put those out, and you can you can win a win a balcony job, which could be a lot of uh, a lot of condos, uh, and usually you're selling to the uh, uh, the, the building developer uh, as an option. But occasionally you get aftermarket uh, uh, requests for that for people who buy the house without the uh, uh, the option and then add it later and uh, and you can be in with the developer and get the referral for for those types of projects. Uh, many of those bought ones as well as I'm calling a bought one uh, condo and uh, townhouse. They also have clubhouses and common area uh, uh, that the developer will put. Uh, developed, uh, or excuse me, uh, shared spaces. In those shared spaces, they're typically required to use uh, ADA compliant project uh, properties, uh, products. And uh, you just have to be aware of that and uh, uh, make sure that you're complying because uh, those are for the public consumption. Uh, so it, it, uh, it's required. But on the individual balconies where it's sold actually as a homeowner, that's not required. The, uh, um, what we want to do is have you guys understand that this is a great opportunity. We've worked with kitchen dealers for almost 20 years, uh, and it's just, I'd say, the last five years we're starting to see uh, a much further gravitation towards uh, the uh, taking advantage of this outdoor market because it's becoming so popular, and it's very similar in nature to uh, what you're doing uh, with, uh, the, with regard to the indoor space. Um, the beauty of it, too, is that the homeowners are now asking uh, um, kitchen dealers uh, to uh, hop on board with this because they're looking for uh, your help in many cases to maximize the, the use of that space that's uh, uh, now, now actually the part of the house. So I'm, I'm seeing it as a, as a great opportunity for you guys to jump on that. Um, and again, sometimes the, the people will focus on one aspect of it, but it's a great opportunity if you show them the, the outdoor living room and the entertainment aspect of that space that uh, uh, you can really grow their budget to handle uh, a bigger project uh, if they're looking at it a little differently than if it's just the appliances that they may have been thinking about when they first thought about it. So that's my message uh, um, to help you sell this lifestyle that uh, I'm sure you're aware of and that there's uh, products out there that can help you address it. Uh, there are products in need of dealers and uh, there's plenty of them. So there's great opportunity for people even in the same areas uh, to carry uh, different products within the same field, uh, whether it's cabinetry, cooking products, uh, fire products or other. This is a cool display, I mean a cool uh, uh, home, so I like to show it twice. Uh, that's all I have, so I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. If I could figure out how to do that on here. Thank okay. you, Dan. Mid. Hopefully everyone can hear, thank you. So there are a couple questions and everyone feel free to put some more questions here into the, the chat. Um, so someone is asking about if you could talk a little bit about how you would deal with like, you know, nature, like, you know, creatures and, and dirt. <laughs> oh, that's a, um, that's a great question. Uh, we, we used to get a lot of those questions about um, creatures. One of the things that we've found, um, and again, it's, we've been doing this a long time, uh, is that people, when, when you're buying a barbecue island or installing a barbecue island, those are uh, like that stone thing or, uh, uh, stucco uh, over uh, with hardy board over it and um, uh, you have two doors that access the gas or the, the sink for plumbing or electric. Um, those go down to the ground. They're usually unfinished so they're uh, dark and damp uh, and hot in the summer, cold in the winter or but warmer than the outside. So what happens is creatures gravitate to that. They like the dark, they like to be in, in these types of areas so you open it up and uh, there's animals in there. Um, what what uh, our experience has been is that with these cabinets, which are raised off the ground, uh, there's airflow in there. They're not uh, they're not because you need airflow to um, satisfy a lot of the the code requirements for where there's gas. They don't want gas buildup. Um, 
with the air and the more light area, we, we just don't get uh, the, the creatures you're probably thinking about, like uh, snakes and um, uh, uh, mice and, and rats and, and other uh, nasty animals. We just don't see them. You will get occasionally uh, spiders that may be there over the winter. You just hose them out and clean them for the spring, and you're good to go. Uh, they don't seem to be one of the things that become an issue. Now, uh, granted, anyone can have some uh, anomaly where they, they do have it, but we don't see it, and it's mainly because it's, it's, it's not a comfortable area for those animals to go into. Uh, more likely might be that uh, the spiders will get into the grill line um, or the mice into the grill line uh, because uh, that is a dark, cool, dark area uh, within it, but that's, that's really part of the grill. You just got to clean that in the spring. Uh, and, and occasionally you might find someone there. But generally speaking, it's not something we hear about. Uh, as far as dirt, um, now we offer a gasket clo closure that, that some people put on um, it, to help against uh, nature, the, whether it's rain or dust, um, which does a, a, a fairly good job. Uh, if you get hurricane winds or side, sideways rain with really a high uh, uh, winds, you can get penetration uh, with wetness uh, if it's exposed completely to the outside. Um, again, it, it's if there's a prevailing wind going one way, sometimes that, that could be a problem. Uh, ways you can counteract that could be uh, your, over, your overhang on your countertop. You put a, uh, a bead of silicone if they haven't put a drip edge, because what a lot of them did early on, but nowadays there's so many countertop people, they don't necessarily get the message that to do, a, uh, they route out a, a drip edge, uh, which uh, comes in front of the cabinet door, so you don't get any travel back of, uh, of water, but you could just as easily put a bead of silicone uh, on that front edge of the, of the countertop. Some of this depends on where you're located on the property, some of it depends on uh, the, where you are in the country as to, to how you deal with that. But we sell, as I mentioned, all over North America, the Caribbean, Hawaii, uh, some in Europe. And they don't typically, we just don't hear about uh, the, the creatures, which is what most people seem to be concerned about. Okay, great. I think, and I think um, you may have covered a little bit about that. There was another question uh, rolled in here about, um, so with the cabinets, they're tight enough so that things that are stored in there remain clean as well? No, not typically. It's They're not airtight because you need the air holes between. A lot of people run uh, cords between uh, or electric conduit between the cabinets. So they go through the cabinets. Uh, sometimes they go under, sometimes they go behind. There's a lot of ways to do it. The cabinets are not built to be airtight. We have the gasket solution in the front, which stops most of the uh, penetration um, and again it depends on where it's located uh, but we do there, there's a lot of the uh, appliance manufacturers that make uh, uh, hermetically sealed uh, gasketed uh, pro products uh, there's a couple of cabinet companies that do it uh, but we've been doing it for all these years and it's it, we just uh, allow for cabinets to who are uh, which are going to be used for storage where something doesn't want to have uh, any exposure to the air we install um, the uh, the appliance manufacturer's air airtight uh, um, product into the cabinet. The other ones are not because they're generally it hasn't been an issue. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so there's another question here about um, smoke and smell when the kitchen is lined with the house. How how is that managed? Uh, you mean against the house? I think I think house. that's I think that's it says when it's aligned with the house. Yes. Okay. So the the issue there is local code will dictate how far a grill can be installed uh, next to a combustible surface. What I suggest people do, uh, we used to make them. We made backsplashes uh, stainless steel to put them against the wall because a lot of people uh, don't think about the fact that uh, you know even if it's non combustible, like say brick, uh, that smoke is grease laden. And uh, if it gets on the wall, it's going to dirty that wall up pretty quickly. So it's good to have some kind of a backsplash behind the grill when it's against the house, however far it is based on the code. Uh, 
some grill manufacturers will put a number in there like six inches or four inches or eight inches or whatever um, but a lot of times uh, that's in contrast to what the local code may be uh, and, and again that's based on what's going on in, in the town you're in um, my recommendation always is that you put something there that is non-combustible that could be cleaned easily um, uh, we also find that uh, anytime there's a, uh, a an overhang uh, local code now requires ventilation, a hood of some sort. Um, and when I first went shopping for hoods out there, uh, you, you couldn't find. You had some that were rated for uh, what they call outdoor. It's really, um, you can't sit it in the rain so much as uh, it can be in an outdoor environment because they just improve the wiring to be able to handle uh, uh, corrosion. Um, so, but what happened is all the manufacturers said you're supposed to mount it five inches off uh, off the wall because it was a, their 27 inch hoods was all that they were making. So I went to a hood manufacturer and had one designed to my specs to be 32 inches off because it's much easier to install a hood by screwing it to the wall and keeping it away because uh, the grill tends to be deeper than an indoor range. So the indoor hood that's being mounted outdoors at 27 inches does not necessarily reach the front of the grill. Uh, and what happens is the smoke will go right over the hood. Uh, that's, so that's why they, they tell you to mount the hood five inches off the wall. Now, uh, the issue with that is that a lot of people that install these things have to then build a soffit, which is problematic to some of them. And a lot of them just install it against the wall. You just, you got to make sure as a project manager that they're installing it properly uh, at, that, at that distance or buy a hood that's made for outdoor use. Uh, that will be uh, enough away from the wall. Uh, and that's one way or another way that you can avoid uh, smoke um, either against the house or if you have a pergola or some other uh, type of covering uh, so that it won't get onto uh, that covering, which can be very difficult to clean. Okay, great information. Um, we do have uh, more time to answer other questions. Uh, let's see, there is another one coming in here. Are the cabinet sizes semi-custom and what type of finishes are available? In our case, we have a, a, a full line. We used, to, we, we used to build indoor kitchens, so we modeled our outdoor line off of the indoor line and we just no longer, I used to make wood cabinets with stainless over it. Now we just make the stainless. Um, and it's, it's, so it's got three inch increments and that's what we call semi-custom. Uh, we do some custom sizes, but uh, we keep those to a minimum because of the design element required. So if you got three inch increments for outdoors, that tends to be able to allow everyone to do a, uh, a, a kitchen of whatever sizes, whatever uh, size they need or want because the cabinets are so uh, such a variety that uh, all those sizes are available. We do tall cabinets as well and wall cabinets, and uh, it really makes it uh, fairly easy to do uh, a fairly complex design, even though the cabinets are three inch increments. When there's a large project and they need a couple of customs or something, we're willing to do that. So that, that does make it, I guess, semi-custom in that respect. Uh, it's not, not fully custom, um, but uh, with with uh, all the different door styles available and all the different powder coats, we have 30 or so uh, through our two brands, uh, 30 or so colors and, and finishes uh, um, available as standard. And then we offer, uh, um, you know, the ability to buy uh, optional colors. Um, so they're not custom where we're mixing to match a fabric those col those colors but they are available as a special order from our, our paint supplier uh, that uh, as long as it's available in an, in an outdoor rated paint. One of the other beauties is we build to order in house. So we, we have no stock on any cabinets. Uh, so we just got good at building um, in short time frames. So our lead times are typically three to four weeks uh, to build a, a kitchen from scratch. Okay, thank you. Um, there's someone asking about mid-level stainless steel manufacturers. Not sure if you can share that information, but if you uh, can. Yeah, there's, I mean, mid-level, I'm sure they're thinking of like a middle price level. Um, there's, uh, uh, there are a series of them. Uh, they're 
Chinese in, in nature. If you look up New Age, uh, um, think of another. The problem with stainless steel is it's it's a premium material, um, so they tend to be in our price range. There's aluminum manufacturers that uh, offer a lesser lesser in in um, uh, SKUs, so they have fewer fewer cabinets. Uh, uh, they're able to uh, control their their cost better because they're not they have a, a, a fewer options. Um, and fewer finishes, and door styles. Um, okay, I don't know. that's I good. That's that's one <laughs> you, you can you can look up uh, them, and it's... you'll find them. A lot of them are associated with the grill, in, in some cases, where you can get a more mid-level range, so that the grill manufacturer will offer uh, a smaller subset of cabinets, but that that are at a I guess you call more middle of the road price. Okay, and then I think this kind of um, is a similar question, but uh, for those who are unfamiliar with cabinet lines available for outdoor kitchens, are there any brands that you would recommend? Uh, yeah, it depends on, on um, I mean, we have two brands. Our brands are Danver and Brown Jordan Outdoor Kitchens. Uh, the Kalamazoo makes an excellent product. You'll hear from Russ next week. Um, there's the, the people who buy Kalamazoo or Viking, Viking is another, they have a smaller subset uh, because their main focus is appliance related. So sell their grills. So they usually sell their cabinets only when their grills are getting spec. Um, there's people like uh, the Canadian guys, Urban Bonfire and uh, um, uh, NatureCast come out of Canada. NatureCast is a resin based product. Uh, Urban Bonfire is an aluminum based product. Um, there's uh, down in Florida here, they has uh, wherever cabinets is another resin based product. Uh, John Michael, I believe is out of South Carolina. Theirs is stainless like ours, uh, fewer cabinets, uh, um, uh, but the price point's about the same. Um, I guess okay. what I'm seeing is there's more cabinet suppliers from the Eastern part of North America than the Western uh, for this. For some reason, we sell okay. most. California is our biggest territory, but um, which really doesn't mean anything. But uh, most of the the uh, there's a bunch of brands. Does that help? Maybe that helps. I think it does. I think there's a little bit of research involved. I think, but that's good. Um, so this kind of um, it dovetails with a little bit about what you've been talking about. The person's asking if there are other types of cabinetry besides stainless, and wants to know more about like handles and hinges and are they outdoor rated? The, the, there's no such thing really as a hinge outdoor rated. It's, it's what the material's made of. So we have had ones made up for us that are, um, uh, 316 stainless, uh, and, and like people think that just cause it's stainless, it doesn't stain, uh, stainless is just that it's stainless, not stain proof. And uh, a hinge is a complex item, so you, you have moving metal over metal. You need to maintain the, the hinge, whether it's uh, 304 or 316 stainless. 316 is a higher corrosion resistance. It's what's, what a lot of people refer to as uh, marine grade. Um, the, the beauty of the powder coat that, that we put over the stainless steel on the doors is that uh, we do it all to the, we, we powder coat the, the pieces of the doors before we assemble them, so none of the metal is exposed to the, the uh, salt air, which is typically the issue uh, with respect to these things. Um, so then, the, but the cabinet is behind the door, so you gotta clean that periodically with, uh, with a stainless cleaner, and that will help protect the metal from uh, the surface rust or pitting that could occur on stainless steel. Uh, um, but it's, it's not a big deal uh, as long as you do that once in a while. And once in a while relates to, depending on how close to the ocean you are and, and what, your, uh, you know, what, what your ability to clean is. Uh, but the hinges, uh, I would say you really need to use a stainless steel hinge. And there's, there's several manufacturers of those. Um, and you need to maintain that with like a WD-40 or a silicone. Uh, periodically, and again, that relates periodically to uh, relates to how close you are to the the harsh environment. Um, but uh, the those the handles are another thing. You know, you get a stainless steel plain handle, you got to clean the stainless steel. 
Uh, we've, we sell some bronze handles. Bronze handles uh, will also uh, tarnish from hand oils or, uh, or the, the uh, oxidize with uh, the air. And you just got to keep those clean periodically too. Uh, or you can wax them. And you can wax them and you do that periodically. It helps uh, reduce the effect of the environment on it. Uh, that's why you see us, uh, some of the newer door styles we have have no handles. Um, because they have it, have it incorporated as part of the door style. Um, and shortly we'll be introducing uh, uh, a no handle, the, the push release uh, doors and drawers at the, the next trade show we're doing. Um, so we're, we're moving in these directions to, I can't c completely eliminate the things that need maintenance, but we're working on it all the time. Um, but the stainless, I guess you could say, uh, would be the best solution for outdoor as opposed to itself being outdoor rated. Okay, good. Um, there's a question here about um, if you think that, if you have any data about the outdoor kitchens and how that can enhance the resale value of the home. I'm not sure if you talked about that. No, what I mentioned, uh, in the only actual data I could find was that slide we had uh, about uh, Zillow that was in casual living. Um, Zillow is claiming, and if, if you read it, it, it says that 25% of the home prices were uh, affected by the inclusion of the, that certain list of items, many of which were, were outdoor items. Uh, when you, at first blush you read it, it, it looks like it says it increased the value of the house by 25%. And there's no way if you have uh, an $800,000 house and you put in a $20,000 outdoor kitchen that it's it's increasing it by 25 percent value so it, it's not that but what it's saying is it made an impact on uh on helping a house get sold 25 percent of the time when those items were added because people are looking for those items in the homes that they're buying but i i can't and don't have any data that would say how much it does it uh by um we are seeing, we have a large project going into New Mexico, believe it or not. Uh, the person is, is spending a large amount of dollars on putting an outdoor living space and in order to sell the house <laughs> specifically for that because they're really putting in a whole series of things and I guess the, the market that they're in, uh, the, it's, it's a huge area of interest for people moving there um, who are coming from, in their case, the uh, Midwest. Okay, good answer. And then there's a final um, question here since we're almost out of time. Um, there's a question about um, materials for good countertops and what would um, designers recommend to customers and what do you think is most popular? Uh, well, unfortunately, the most popular is still granite because that's what people know. Everyone says, well, granite comes from the outdoors, so it's the best. But the problem with granite um, as many of you might know, is that it's uh, somewhat porous, so it can stain. Um, you know, that's what the ceiling helps improve upon. Um, a lot of times people will get the countertop installed and then um, they don't seal it ever again. <laughs> uh, I know that happens indoors. Um, uh, so granted, is not necessarily the best, which is why a lot of these countertop manufacturers are making uh, man-made materials uh, that are completely non-porous. Uh, you know, I can think of a couple offhand. You got Neolith uh, um, and uh, Cosentino. Uh, they make a product called Dectin, and they're heavily promoting that. Uh, both of those are, are non-porous materials, can't scratch, uh, aren't affected by heat and cold, but they tend to have a, a, a they're, they're more difficult to machine for the uh, fabricators to do it. So it's, it's while, while preferred by many people, uh, getting to, from the preference to the actual installed version of it, it's, it, you have to find the appropriate uh, fabricator for it. Um, I ran across, the, across another uh, supplier of a, with a plant-based uh, uh, quartz uh, um, material. And uh, they're out of, uh, it's called Doresco, they're out of uh, Brazil. And um, one of my dealers in Colorado likes that because what happens with granite in cold areas is if water seeps in and it freezes and thaws and freezes and thaws, you can start chipping off, um, which is one of the downfalls of, additional downfalls of granite potentially 
in cold areas, uh, even though that's what most people put in. Um, the, this new material is uh, easier for the fabricator to work with. It has UV inhibitors, and that's one of the requirements because most quartz products uh, don't have UV inhibitors, and what happens is the sun, when it gets on there, starts to yellow the material and then uh, actually have it uh, uh, fail um, in, a, in a few years' time, again, depending on how close to the sun. Um, that, so there's, uh, I guess you could look at uh, neolith, which is porcelain, Dectin, which is porcelain glass and quartz uh, under high pressure and heat to create the beautiful look. And they have tons of different finishes. Uh, and then a lot of the main manufacturers are attacking that market. I just don't know the others uh, in that market. People like Cambria and uh, uh, some, of the, some of their competitors, because that's a, uh, got a lot of players in that market, and they all want to address this outdoor space. Well, that's great information, Mitch. You've really shared a lot of expertise here today and really want to thank you again for your time. And everyone else is, you can't probably see it, but they're thanking you as well. Thank you, so, I appreciate oh, you're guys. welcome. And uh, I hope you all have a great day. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I will send you some information um, how to contact uh, Danver. And um, once again, thank you, Mitch, for your time and everyone out there for joining us today. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.